Hello and welcome. This video will take you through some of the benefits of Land Rover's range of plug-in hybrid vehicles for company car drivers and fleet operators. You'll be aware that from 2030, all new cars sold in the UK will have to be zero emission or have a high level of electrification. Between now and then, we'll see an acceleration towards electrified vehicles, and Land Rover has committed to introducing six all-electric vehicles over the next five years, bringing their signature blend of luxury and unrivaled capability to the fully electric market. But there's no need to wait. Land Rover already offers plug-in hybrid options on the majority of our models, and there are a number of advantages to adopting these technologies now. I have with me now the Discovery Sport PHEV, our most versatile compact Land Rover, alongside the Range Rover Evoque PHEV and Range Rover Velar PHEV, both award-winning designs and boasting the levels of refinement you'd expect from a member of the Range Rover family. We also offer plug-in hybrid options on the Range Rover Sport, Range Rover and the new Defender, all icons in their own right and part of our electrified lineup. But let's not be coy. Regardless of all the latest features and must-have technology, all fleet vehicles are subject to financial scrutiny. So let's start with the financial benefits of going electric. On the face of it, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles appear more expensive than models running purely on petrol or diesel. However, the reduced running costs and taxation benefits often outweigh the higher retail price. The key to the tax savings is in the CO2 emissions that the vehicle achieves. This is typically over 100 grams per kilometre for petrol or diesel cars. Our Discovery Sport, Evoque and Velar PHEVs offer a substantial reduction in this figure, crucially coming in under 50 grams per kilometre. For companies, the current rules allow just 6% of the value of a vehicle with emissions over 50 grams per kilometre to be written down against tax as a capital allowance. PHEV models with emissions below 50 grams per kilometre enjoy a higher rate of 18% per year. Combined with stronger predicted residual rates for electrified vehicles, in many cases this difference alone will offset the increased retail price of electrified vehicles. And if you're an employee receiving a company car, benefiting kind rates are much lower on electrified vehicles. Compared with the typical cost for a petrol or diesel car of between 30 to 37 percent, Land Rover PHEVs can offer benefiting kind rates from just 11 percent. So monthly payments for drivers will be less than half the cost of driving petrol or diesel. These are the sort of savings that can feel like a pay rise. And even our larger PHEV models achieve significant tax and fuel savings. Whether it be the refined luxury of Range Rover or the rugged go-anywhere Defender, you don't have to compromise on your choice of vehicle or give up any of the things you love about your current car. The financial benefits are further buoyed by the lower running costs. PHEV's official MPG figures are extremely impressive. In all honesty, real-world figures for PHEV vary more than for any other type of vehicle and are very much dependent on usage. With electric range of around 30 miles, if your journeys between charging periods are less than that, or well, potentially you might never start the engine. Costs for running on electric are about 4 or 5 pence per mile, compared with 15 to 20 pence per mile for petrol or diesel. So if you currently fill your car up once or twice a month, you could cut your running costs by a third. If you can charge your work, as well as home, longer commutes can be completed on purely electric power. Currently, there is no benefit in kind taxation on electric charging at work. Alongside the financial benefits, I think it's reasonable to say that there may be some concern amongst drivers about adopting what feels like a new technology. As an electric car owner myself, I researched relentlessly, absorbed all the knowledge that I could, and in the end, when it was delivered, it was more similar than dissimilar. There is anxiety over range, where you'll charge, how long they will last, even questions about whether they're really environmentally more friendly. So I'd like to take some time explaining how they work, how they drive, 
and how it is living with an electrified vehicle. The first consideration is that you'll need to plug it in and charge it somewhere. Now, ideally, this would be a driveway at home, but you may be able to plug in and charge at work. There are government grants that contribute towards the cost of installing chargers at both home and business premises, bringing the cost down to around £500, depending on supplier. Land Rover have recommended installer partnerships to make this step as simple as possible. These chargers are really simple. Just connect the power socket and then connect the car and it starts charging. It won't overcharge, so you can leave it plugged in all the time and let the battery management systems do their thing. This also allows for remote climate capability. Just press a button on the Land Rover remote phone app and the car will de-ice itself and warm the interior in winter and cool down in summer so that it's more comfortable to get in. This type of charging uses AC power at a rate of 7 kilowatts. PHEV batteries will fully recharge in about two and a half hours. Just plug it in every time you come home to maximise the driving you do on electric power. Odd days made up of lots of short journeys, the ones where petrol and diesel engines never really reach efficient operating temperature. You might even beat the official MPG figures. If you have access to rapid DC charging at your destination, Evoke, Discovery Sport, Velar and Defender PHEVs can make use of this, recharging to 80% in less than 30 minutes. When you're ready to go, simply unplug, close the flap over the charging port and you're good to go. Incidentally, it won't let you drive whilst plugged in, so no need to worry about forgetting and pulling away while still tethered. What I've loved is not having to go to fuel stations as often. There is a real convenience to this. Every morning, the car is fully recharged, ready to go. Jumping into the Discovery Sport PHEV, when you press the start button, mostly you won't hear the engine start, but the dashboard lights will come on. You pull away silently under electric power. And if you don't need hard acceleration, it'll stay that way. When you do want a little bit more power, the engine will start and there's a seamless transfer to power from the petrol engine. And both powertrains can work together to give a combined output of 300 horsepower. Now, often people don't realise this about plug-in hybrids, that they're usually quicker than their petrol counterparts. The 0-60 time on Discovery Sport PHEV is 6.2 seconds. On Velar PHEV, it's just 5.1 seconds. Now, you can really enjoy the drive. The power delivery is smooth and quiet while cruising, and you can stay on electric power all the way up to motorway speeds. Push things a little harder, and there's just that characterful growl from the engine. And whilst there is a little bit of extra weight in the car that you feel in corners that's coming from the batteries, the car never feels unbalanced and there's plenty of grip with standard all-wheel drive making sure that you can deliver all 300 horsepower onto the tarmac. In many ways, the best compliment I can pay it is it drives just like a Discovery Sport. And Land Rover put a great deal of effort into preserving the underlying character of each car. There are three different driving modes. Default mode is hybrid, where the car decides which powertrain to use depending on the circumstance. On longer journeys, you might choose to put the car in save mode. Now, this locks it into using just petrol power, saving the electric charge for driving with zero exhaust emissions through urban areas later in your journey. When you come to the outskirts of a town, you can select EV mode to lock the car into just using electric power for quiet progress with zero exhaust emissions. Whenever you slow down, the car recovers kinetic energy to recharge the battery. You can see on the display how it switches between using battery power when I accelerate and then feeding it back in when I slow down or drive downhill. Overall then, it drives just like a regular car, albeit a really nice one with a surprising turn of speed. You don't have to worry about long journeys because you can just fill it up with petrol whenever you need to. With your day-to-day -day commute, you can see great efficiency from the electric range. The cabin envelops you in a fantastic mix of materials and textures, all as practical and durable as you'd expect from Discovery Sport. And these sit alongside the latest technologies, such as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which are standard. Ultimately, of the thousands of people I've spoken to who own electrified cars, I'm yet to meet one who would willingly go back to petrol or diesel. Certainly, that's how I feel. And there's no shortage of choice. 
the effortless practicality of Discovery Sport, the award-winning design of Evoke and Velar, the reborn legend that is Defender, even our flagship Range Rover and Range Rover Sport. Whether you're an enthusiastic driver concerned about urban air quality or simply looking for an option that's more fuel efficient and more tax efficient, Land Rover's range of electrified SUVs are leading the charge towards motoring's future. For more information, search for Land Rover PHEVs and follow the links to our website.